Hello and a warm welcome to Munich International School's virtual open day. We're delighted that so many of you are joining us from all over the world today. My name is Suzanne and together with Julie, Denise and Josanne, I work in the admissions office. We appreciate that selecting the right school for your child or children is an important decision. And therefore we have uh, created this day to give you more of an idea of what MI is actually doing and what we can offer for your child. In today's session, you'll first be welcomed by our head of school, Mr. Timothy Thomas, followed by an introduction of our junior, middle and senior school principals. And you have the opportunity to meet uh, one of our fantastic teachers um, for our technology and making, Mr. Armin Martin, as well as our senior school guidance counselor, Chris Floor. We will also let you, wish to let you know that uh, today's session will be recorded and we will also send this to you in an email afterwards. Now, you may have questions that you wish to ask. Please feel free to do so by submitting any questions you have in the chat in the chat function at the top. We will then get back to you at uh, the end of the session in the Q&A and answer all the questions that you have. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Timothy Thomas. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are in the world. My name is Tim Thomas, and I'm the head of school here at Munich International School. Um, I'm a US American. I've been at the school now for nine years, um, and I've made uh, Germany my permanent home. So uh, I've been in Germany for 30 years, which is more than half of my life, um, and it's a place that I love. And what I love most of all is this school and this place. And I am pleased to share just a little bit of information about the whole school with you today. So I need to pull up a few slides. So we are Munich International School, and I'm just going to tell you a little bit about our whole school. And then I'm going to have our specialists in each of the school sections give you some more specific information about other sections of the school. Um, nurture, challenge, and inspire are three verbs that our school settled on quite a few years ago to describe our commitment to all of the students and all of the families in our school. It's something that we take very seriously and they are guiding words that help us to make decisions about how we invest our time and our resources and about how we uh, develop very intentionally the educational experience here at the school. Here's a picture of the Schloss. The Schloss is one of our buildings. It's where the school started in 1968. All of the classrooms are in that building. Today, we have six different buildings around the campus where most of the specialized classrooms and learning spaces are located, and the Schloss now serves as our administrative building. The little bit that I would like to share with you this morning is a bit about the International Baccalaureate Program, the IB. I'd also like to share a little bit about our academic results, about our holistic values-based learning environment, about the warm and welcoming international school community that is Munich International School, and about our campus. So first of all, I'd just like to say quickly that we are very uh, convinced that the quality of any school depends almost totally on the quality of its teachers. And so we invest considerably in ensuring that we can bring the very best, most talented and caring teachers from around the world to teach at Munich International School. We have a very specific profile of what we look for in educators. Number one is that our educators are extremely caring that they're really committed to the well-being and to the learning of every child in their care, that they're highly competent, both as pedagogues um, and in the field that they teach. Given what, that we're an international school, they are all culturally respectful people. And then very importantly, they're happy, positive people who want to make learning enjoyable for all of their students and for themselves. Regardless of how old your children are when they join our school, it might be that they would complete their schooling with us. And so it's important to talk about what kind of results our students routinely achieve in, for example, the IB diploma. So at the conclusion of grade 12, our students write examinations that are part of the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. And almost all of our students, and sometimes all of the students, achieve the IB diploma. 
The IB Diploma is a school leaving certificate that is recognized in over 100 countries around the world, including in Germany. In Germany, the IB Diploma is recognized as the Allgemeine Hochschule Zugangsberechtigung, or the Abitur. So the IB gives you the same access to universities that the German Abitur does. And in other countries like the UK and in the US and Canada, it is a very highly respected qualification that gives students the ability to gain admission to even the most selective universities. Now, the most points that a student can earn in the IB Diploma is 45 points. Our students last year scored an average of 38 points. And to give you an idea of how that compares globally to other international schools, the global average was 30, 33 out of 45. So our students were five points above the average globally. And we had five students who got a perfect score of 45 points. Very few students, only one or 2% of students around the world are able to get a perfect score. And out of 100 students that we had last year, we had five who got a perfect score. We had 40, uh, 41 students who scored 40 points or higher. And to give you a sense, 40 points or higher qualifies you really to apply to the very most selective universities around the world. So 41 of our 100 graduates were in that range. And 99% of our students completed the full IB diploma successfully. And the pass rate at international schools around the world there's an average of 88%. So you can see that our students do very well academically when they leave our school. They, have, they also write examinations at the conclusion of grade 10. Those examinations are called the MYP E assessments. They are recognized in Germany as being a mittlere Schulabschluss, so they're similar to the mittlere Reife. They are recognized around the world as a grade 10 leaving qualification. And again, our students do very well. So the, the top score possible is 54 points in the MYPE assessment. Last year, our students scored an average of 44 points, which was well above all global averages. And 96% of the students achieved the full MYP certificate. We also do assessments further down the school so that we can compare the academic performance of our students to other students around the world. In uh, grades three through eight, for example, our students participate in the International Schools Assessment, the ISA, which is part of the PISA study. So it allows us to compare the performance of our students to other students around the world. And here uh, you can see how our students scored in 2018 and 2019 in reading compared to other students from other systems around the world. So you can see that our students scored higher on average than students in Singapore, in Canada, Hong Kong, and Finland, some of the highest scoring uh, systems throughout the world. That was in reading. And the results were similar in mathematics. So this is looking at our grade eight students and comparing them to 15 year olds around the world. And you can see that in mathematics, our students scored on average quite a bit better than students in even the most high performing systems um, around the world. So academically, our students do very well and we're very proud of their performance. But our school is not only about academics. There's a lot that students need to learn and need to experience that's beyond academics. And that happens mainly in our co-curricular program. So we have a very diverse and active arts, athletics, and after-school activities program. Um, we have classes in the visual arts, in drama, in music, in film that are part of the regular school day. And then we have more than 60 after-school activities in each of three seasons throughout the year. And that includes things like string quartets, choirs, bands, and orchestras. It includes athletics like football, volleyball, cross country, tennis, rugby, track and field, and several other sports. And it includes lots of high interest activities like sailing on the Starnberger See, rowing, tree climbing, nature skills, ballet, pottery, computer coding, Lego Mindstorm, nearly limitless. Now, I also like to say just a little bit about our community. We are a community with over 65 nationalities currently at the school. You can see some of the kids there holding their national flags. We are here for over 50 years. So we are currently in about our 56th year of existing here in Starnberg. We have about 1,200 students who come from 65 nationalities. We have about 230 teachers and staff who come from 27 countries. We are Munich International School EV or EV which means that we are a registered charity in Germany. We are a completely non-for-profit organization. 
um, the parents are all the members of the association and together the parents elect volunteers to be the board and the board governs the school. So we are a completely not-for-profit organization that is here purely for the education of the children. We have a parent-teacher association, parent-teacher Verein, which is extremely active. And this parent-teacher Verein supports families who come to our school. So if you come to our school new, the PTV, the parent-teacher Verein, will be an organization who would get into touch with you and would support you in helping you get organized here locally, helping you integrate into the local community. We have an MIS foundation that supports the arts and culture within our community. We have the MIS Sportverein that supports all kinds of um, athletic activities at the school. We have a very long-standing Tanzania project, which is a service project. We support an entire region of Tanzania. We've founded schools, we support orphanages, we support hospitals, and a medical school in the area. And our alumni and friends are people who have come to our school and either graduated or they've moved away, and they're a part of our extended community that spans the globe. So when our students graduate or when families move away, they become a part of this organization, and you can look in the database and see, for example, if you're moving away to Melbourne, Australia, you can see which other MIS alumni are there and maybe have contacts and friends even before you arrive in your new home. I always like to tell families a little bit about our campus. You can see an aerial view of the campus there. We are surrounded by woods. We're on the very edge of a city called Starnberg, which has about 30,000 people, which is a beautiful alpine city right on a very large lake. Um, and we have lots of ground. So we have 25 square acres, and you can see that those grounds there, as well as the buildings that make up our campus. So we have 25 acres of play spaces, athletic fields, and nature paths. We have an Olympic-sized eight-lane track and field. We are just finishing a quadruple sports hall with dance studio and fitness center for the students and for the community. We have a performing arts center, which is a large theater where students perform concerts and plays. We have an innovative science and technology laboratory suite at the school. We have one-to-one -one MacBook program in grades seven through 12, and an iPad and MacBook program in EC through grade six. We have our own cafeteria with a kitchen on site that serves freshly prepared food. All of the food that is served by our cafeteria is organic. And we have a full transportation program. So we have over 80 bus lines that bring children from all over Southern Bavaria to our school every day, and then take them home in shifts in the afternoon. Here you can see one of our recent graduates who's currently studying at Stanford University. And when she was a student here at school, she was very interested in robotics and engineering. And there she is sharing one of her creations with one of our younger students during an exhibition. Um, some of the new things that we've been developing as part of our strategic plan, we have a 500 square meter maker's laboratory in the basement of our LADC, which has amazing technology that students are able to put their hands on and to, and to really use in the way that they might use later in their careers. We've had a school-wide focus on student voice, choice, and leadership, trying to give students more active control and influence over their learning here at school. We are actively pursuing greater relevance in the curriculum and real-world connections outside the school. We have developed innovation grants that allow both students and teachers to make proposals about how to make learning more relevant and fun here at school. We've been expanding our university and career counseling program, which has resulted in students gaining access to some really stellar universities around the world. You can see some of them listed there. And we've been investing in mindfulness, pastoral care, and student well-being, particularly following the pandemic. We find it so important to equip students with strategies for managing their anxiety, managing their stress, and finding balance in their lives. So that was a very quick overview. I know it was a lot of information all at once. We will expand on that information as you meet each of the people who leads our school sections. But I'd like to conclude this section by just saying a few words about why I think Munich International School is a great place for kids to learn. I'm really proud of the way that we can integrate students' individual interests, needs, and goals here into the learning at school. We have a flexible program. It's not so rigid, and we're able to take students' interests and make that a part of their learning. We have truly outstanding teachers, many of whom are the authors and the examiners, um, the curriculum leaders and workshop leaders for the IB. So many of the people who are creating the International Baccalaureate curriculum are actually active teachers at our school. 
We have an engaging future-oriented curriculum that is based on an inquiry, technology, making, innovation, and multimodal literacies. We have a very holistic education that includes social and emotional learning, arts, creativity, innovation, and inquiry through play. We have a beautiful campus that is a really delightful place to spend the day. And we have a truly welcoming international community. So that was a very quick overview of some of the things that I think are important to share about Munich International School. And at this time, it is my privilege and pleasure to hand you over to somebody who can tell you about how our youngest learners spend their day here at school. That's Mr. David Fried. He's the principal of our junior school. David? Great. Hi. Hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Tim, uh, for that introduction. Here uh, behind me, perhaps you can see a little bit of our park-like campus. Uh, it is truly a remarkable place. I'd like to share a little bit about the junior school now. Uh, again, junior school uh, is the area of the school for our children who come in through the early childhood program, so ages four and five, all the way up through grade four. And I'll talk a little bit about that now. Um, first off, a little bit about myself. I'm an American. Uh, this is my 10th year at MIS, and I'm also very proud and happy to be here every day working to serve the needs of the students in the community. Uh, I've had two children graduate uh, from MIS and move on to university in the United States, and my youngest is now in grade 10. So I've been able to see the school through many different lenses. Uh, MIS is truly a remarkable place. Uh, you've heard quite a bit from Tim. Uh, not only in the junior school do we have a very academically rigorous uh, and uh, hardy program for learning and languages and mathematics and so forth, uh, we also have a very well-rounded program. And through the primary years program, uh, we provide what's called a transdisciplinary model of learning. Uh, students uh, are able to learn about the sciences, about history, about the world, about their communities, while they're learning about language, while they're learning about mathematics. Uh, we also have a very well-rounded program, too, in the junior school. So uh, all of our students uh, participate and take German lessons daily. Uh, they also will attend lessons for art and music, physical education. All of these lessons taught by uh, professional artists and musicians and people in the community who are qualified teachers uh, and that our students gain tremendously from this experience and this opportunity to learn in this way. Uh, many of our children also come into our school as uh, English as additional language students, so students whose language at home is something other than English. In fact, in our EC program, our youngest children, two-thirds of our students entered our school as uh, beginner-level English students. And I want to assure all of the people participating in today's forum just to know that children come into our school at all levels and all ages in the junior school, and we have a very rigorous program of support. Uh, we have one extra, one full-time teacher who supports our beginner level students outside of the classroom in small groups, helping the children develop some quick uh, learning and some quick skills so that they can be successful in the classroom. That support continues in the classroom for our students for years, as many years as we need to support children so that they can be successful alongside their mother tongue English speaking students and their friends. Um, we also have other programs of support for our students. We have a learning support model, uh, which provides some extra small group or even one-on-one -on -one learning for children who may need a little extra boost in reading, phonics, writing, mathematics. Uh, and so there's a number of ways that we can support children as we do have such a variety of students and a variety of learners who come to us from around the world. Um, our students also benefit from being in our school because as you've heard from uh, Mr. Thomas, we do have many extended opportunities for children to learn outside of the regular school day. Uh, about 90 of our junior school students uh, stay after school, either in the early childhood uh, extended day program or for grades one through four, the after school care program. Uh, in, this, uh, in these programs, the children are able to enjoy our campus, to be outside, also to participate in after school activities. So it's a real opportunity for our children to make the most of their school day and learn um, not only during the school day, but afterwards too. Uh, thankfully at our school as well, we have a full-time nurse who's always on campus, which uh, as you can well imagine, has been hugely helpful for these last two years, uh, but it's always been a wonderful resource, not just for our students' health, 
but also as a resource for our parents and our parent community. Uh, our park-like campus just gives children an opportunity to learn in the outdoors. Many of our lessons and activities do take place outside. Uh, not only do we want our children to enjoy their recess and break times and lunch periods outdoors, but as you'll hear in just a few minutes from Armin Martin, our uh, teacher on special assignment for making and inquiry and technology, uh, much of our learning is taking place outside, which we're very excited about too. Um, today, in fact, is a very special day. It's uh, a day that we're dedicating across the whole school to conferencing with parents. Uh, and it, that's a good example in the junior school of about how we communicate uh, students' learning to parents and with parents. Uh, in this case, with student-led conferences, our students really take ownership of their learning. And today across, uh, across Munich, as these conferences are happening virtually, our children are sharing their goals, the progress they've made, uh, and sharing their learning to emphasize to their parents the growth they've made and what are their next steps as learners. So this is one piece of the puzzle of how we communicate with parents. Uh, we also have uh, conferences that take place in the fall. We also use uh, quite regularly a, a software program called Seesaw. Many other schools around the world are now using this software. It's a, a way for us to communicate with parents, but it's also a nice portfolio tool where children can record themselves reading, they can record videos, they can demonstrate their learning uh, for you to see at home, uh, as well as for you to share with other family members. It's truly a nice opportunity for children to feel proud of what they've learned and to see the progress themselves. Uh, working as partners also includes having uh, what we call parent principal forums. We invite parents in monthly uh, to come and meet with me, to come and meet with other teachers. Uh, some of the topics in the past have been how we teach mathematics at school, how we teach phonics and reading. Uh, we also talk about technology, any number of themes and topics that are important to parents. Uh, but also it's important for us to work as partners so that we can help you know how to help your children at home. We also have what we call principal's coffees, just informal gatherings, opportunities for parents to come in, uh, ask questions, get to know the school even deeper. It's also a wonderful way for parents to meet other parents. Um, as uh, Mr. Thomas uh, stated earlier, MIS is a special place, not only because of the amazing campus, but truly it comes down to the people who work here. Uh, I'm very fortunate in my role as principal to have a full-time assistant principal. Uh, the assistant principal's uh, main responsibilities are to look out for the progress of our students, uh, the pastoral care that includes their social and emotional development, their academic progress. So we truly keep an eye on every individual who comes into our school. Uh, we also have a, a curriculum coordinator who ensures that not only are we meeting the standards of the IB, but that we're uh, providing the best curriculum to excite our students and to develop their learning to and our learners to their fullest potential. Uh, a number of other people are here on campus. We have a school counselor who works with students in classrooms to teach about conflict resolution, communication, and to work with individuals who may need some extra help. So um, as I like to say, there's something for everyone here at MIS, uh, and I'm certainly uh, happy to answer other questions if they do pop up in the chat. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm very honored and happy to introduce someone I've known a long time, uh, Armin Martin. Armin is, uh, as I said, a teacher on special assignment, uh, which sounds pretty great um, in itself. Uh, Armin's main responsibilities have to do in the area of technology and making. And uh, perhaps, Armin, you can start off by just introducing yourself a little bit and then uh, sharing a little bit about what does that mean for students in the junior school? Great. So, I have the pleasure of working with students in all the different classrooms and teachers, and it's really hard to separate technology from making or making from technology. And it's actually hard to separate any of the other subjects because, for example, in our makerspace, when students are coming to um, further their learning, um, and in the classrooms when they do that, they always say, oh, to make this, I didn't know I had to do so much math or I didn't know I had to read so much. And so everything is really nicely integrated. Um, and just to give you another example of that, just a few things happening this week. I'll give you a few more examples later, but for example, in grade four, we have students that are learning about the changing climate and how people respond to it. And so this week, um, the students are choosing to either build um, Lego robotics where they can code the robotics and it has sensors in it and motors. 
and for build emergency shelters outside or how to work in our outside environment or code and develop um, weather um, sensors. So there's a lot that happens in the classrooms outside and in this makerspace. I have a smaller, we're in a smaller makerspace compared to the big one in the middle school and senior school. Mm -hmm. Very good. Armin, maybe you can describe uh, for the parents who've joined us today, how does this type of learning support children's development? I think what's really important is that it empowers the learners because we really try to respond to their interests. And so because it makes them understand what their interests are and learn more about it in the context of the real world, then they're more empowered learners. Mm -hmm. Armin, you, you shared a couple um, ideas uh, of things you've been doing with students. Perhaps you could uh, share uh, maybe a couple more examples and, and also explain the process you go through with the homeroom teachers to plan uh, these types of learning experiences for our students and how deliberate they are in the work you do. I think what's really nice is that the school is very proactive instead of reactive. So for example, we've had this COVID uh, pandemic for some time. And so the teachers have really responded to creating more individualized units. So for example, in our grade four and grade two um, grades, they have units where all year the students can explore their own interests. And we use the design process in that so that we can go further with the learning. We connect it to sustainable goals as well, but also very closely connected to student interests. So um, we're ready in case students need to do more individualized learning, depending on the situation, but we're also supporting them in their own interest in doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in my role as principal, uh, Arm and I often see children hopping and skipping on down to the baker space or carrying a load of tools and uh, materials that they're excited to go work with you on. But perhaps you can share from your perspective, what have been the reactions and some of the feedback you've heard from students about their learning, but also from their parents? I think um, what's great from parents that come, parents often say, oh, I wish I could be in school again. And um, we're lucky enough to have some volunteers as well that come and help us in the makerspace. What's also important is that making doesn't happen only in the makerspace because here we're just kind of a resource center. So, the students can come and pull any sort of resource that they need. They have a safety training at the beginning of the year to be safe with the different tools, know how they can be used. Some tools require a little bit more guidance. So they'll use those in close proximity with me or one of the other teachers. But a lot of times they're coming to take robots out that then they can use in the classroom or in other spaces that we have. And that includes in our outdoor spaces. For example, we're getting the garden going um, again, as spring is approaching, but even um, in small ways, for example, in EC, we were working with our earthworm farms this week, and we were using a high-powered microscope to see the new um, cocoons and the new baby worms coming out, which are then going to go in our outside garden. So um, in the planning meetings, teachers are very, very responsive to what um, students want to do, and so I try and help that. and. Um, and we all support each other in that. It, a lot of times we have different grades working with different grades and students of different ages working with students of younger ages. Very good, thank you, Armin, that's very helpful. Um, I believe you're gonna stay on and perhaps answer any questions that may pop up in the chat. So thank you again. Yeah, I'll be and here. And now it's, Thanks. ah, very good. Now I'm happy to introduce our middle school principal, Michelle Yuhas. There you go, Michelle, take it away. We can't hear you, Michelle. We still can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, this sounds much better. OK, thank you very much. Hi, I am Michelle Yuhas, the middle school principal here at MIS. This is my fifth year here, and I have been overseas for many years. First started in uh, Guatemala and then Frankfurt, Tokyo, uh, Lima, and now very happy here in Munich. It's a beautiful place to be, 
but our campus, as you will learn, uh, is also very beautiful. And behind me, you'll see the middle school building. And right across from the middle school building is our students' favorite play area, which is the tree area, and they love to play tag in there. Um, I am joined here in Munich with my uh, husband who teaches grade four, and I have a daughter in grade 10. And my son just graduated from MIS last year. So I have lots of perspectives to offer in terms of attending MIS. In the middle school, we cater really to grade five through grade eight students. So students who are turning 11 to students who are turning 14. And we are very aware of the specific needs that students have at this age. Our goal is to have them become very confident young adults uh, to build uh, their social well-being, um, help them to interact with different students who may have different interests from them. Um, we want them to explore new opportunities in their, not only in their education, but also outside of school as well. We um, really see our job as also building academic skills. So yes, there's knowledge that are, is a very important, but we know that there's skills attached to that that help students become very successful, like research skills, like thinking skills, organization and planning. These are really incredible skills that students will need for a lifetime. And we see our job in the middle school as being um, really experts in this area and helping our students develop the working skills and strategies that they need to be able to manage in the day-to-day -day world. Um, we also really foster creativity in our school. Students often have lots of opportunities to demonstrate their learning in different ways. And we also uh, really pay attention to students' progress in school. And if they're not doing well, we make sure that we apply strategies to help them in our regular school program. We are the, have the middle years program here. So in the junior school, there is the PYP or the primary years program. And in the middle school, we have the MYP, the middle years program. And it's really based upon inquiry as well, where students explore topics and concepts and uh, there's also services action, which is also mandatory and oftentimes applied through the regular curriculum. We have lots of interdisciplinary learning opportunities for students. And in each grade level, there's a pro specific project that students are engaged in. We also have portfolios where students look at themselves as a learner and show examples uh, throughout their year that show their growth over time. So normally the MYP curriculum begins in grade six and at MIS we begin the MYP in grade five and the grade starting in grade five it has huge benefits for our students in the sense that the classroom is very similar to what the students experienced in grade four. So I consider it a soft start into grade five. So our students have one teacher for math, science, humanities, and English. And this really helps them to become acquainted with the middle school. It helps them to slowly integrate into the MYP curriculum and understand the marking scheme and also get the help that they might need for English language learning and any academic needs that they have. So this soft start really does help our students to become more successful in their transition into middle school. In grade five, students also have, other than math, science, English, and humanities with one teacher, they also go to other classrooms with specialists and maybe they experience classes that they've not had before. So one class is called design, where the students have the opportunity to have um, Lego robotics, they might have the opportunity to do product design, or they might have the opportunity to have food design. Arts is also part of the regular curriculum where the students have drama, visual arts and music. We also have German, of course, and students who have been speaking German their whole life and really are looking at a literature based program 
are in German A and will have a teacher who is, is, is highly proficient in German and understands the need to keep the language going at a higher level. But we also have German B, where we have students who are absolute beginners and we have students who are um, really maybe integrating this as their second or third language. And we have different levels that are appropriate for all students. And of course, one of our student our students' favorite class is physical education. And with our new facilities coming, I think it will even be a program that can expand our students' opportunities further. Um, our regular daily schedule consists of 55 minute classes. And in the morning, students arrive at school, they have their homeroom time. And this specific time is used for all of our students in the middle school to have their first hello with a teacher from the school. And this uh, time is really considered that opportunity for them to check in on what's happening in the school, what celebrations are going on in the school. And of course, these days we also use this time for our um, morning COVID testing. But it's just a way for the students to connect with their class and really get organized for the day. Um, we have two periods in the morning and then a morning break where the students are often busy and running around and playing. They come back for one more class and then they have a 55 minute lunchtime and then three periods in the afternoon of 55 minutes each. So each period of the day is very different from the one that they had before. And the students are often moving, especially more so in grades six, seven, and eight. So one addition in grades six, seven, and eight that students have the opportunity to do is a new language. So students may choose to take a language as a beginner in grade six, and they can choose French, Spanish, or Mandarin. So we're undergoing this selection process now. But students may also choose to do um, supervised studies, and especially if students are involved in sport after school and really need a chance and an opportunity to catch their breath and catch up with some work that they've missed, there's an opportunity for this supervised study uh, class. But parents can also schedule music, private music lessons or private language lessons during this time. Another feature of an elective for grades six, seven, and eight this year is Maker's Lab. So students can work on individual projects in the Maker's Lab during their supervised studies time. So we're looking for lots of ways of students to expand their opportunities in the middle school that are unique to our school and maybe not unique to all middle years program schools. We are used to having new language learners all the time. So especially in English, we have students who come and don't have a command of English. We know how to assess where they are. We also are able to assess what they need. And we have specialized teachers in each grade level that help the students to achieve their best in progressing in their language. And so um, we would assess every student that comes into the school and for their previous um, academic progress. And we would also assess their English language learning and make sure that they get the help that they need. So sometimes in grade five and six, we have students who have never uh, spoken English or learned in English before, and that is not a problem for us. Our students have, uh, as Tim mentioned, they do have uh, technology, and this was really helpful to us during the um, absence from school over the last couple of years that occurred from time to time. Our students have iPads in the middle school, and it has an integrated keyboard. So our students are able to um, be not just users of technology, but are really with an iPad able to be producers of their own uh, technology and integrating it through photos and video, and it's giving it a more dynamic experience in the school. We have a lot of uh, activities for students to get involved in within the school. We have a student active student council where students give us feedback, for example, on new playground equipment. We have a student newspaper, and we have a lot of students right now that are working on service projects. But after school, we also have a competitive and non-competitive sport 
uh, program. We have a theater program that's really lively. Each year we have at least two performances. We have lots of outdoor pursuits for students. We have art clubs, we have journalism and cooking. So our students are very busy here in the middle school, um, but they're also academically really switched on and really motivated to do well in school. So this combination makes it a really exciting place to be. And um, one of the most common questions I get from a lot of German families is how our students cope with the longer school day. And this is quite common for our students even coming from the junior school who finish at 315. So all of our students are adjusting to a longer school day when they start in grade five. But because of the dynamic nature of the day and the variety of activities that students are engaged in, it doesn't seem to take long for them to adjust and for them to really see what they're learning and um, be able to really not see it as a problem at all. They're really excited to be here and happy to be here at MIS. I look forward to answering any questions you have um, in the chat or afterwards by email, that's not a problem, so please do reach out. Right now, I'm going to pass on to my colleague, Anders Carlson, who's the senior school principal. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Uh, so my name is Anders Carlson. I'm not from here. I'm not English either, I'm Swedish. So, and uh, just like my colleagues, I've been working in various countries before I came to MIS. I've been here for 10 years. I like this place. Um, so I'm the principal for the senior school, which means grade nine to until 12. And uh, let me first talk uh, briefly about grade nine and 10, which is sort of the, the last part of the MYP. So it's one, like one entity. Uh, students study the core subjects of English, maths, science, German, all students study German, humanities, PE, and then they can choose between a large number of, of subjects like uh, French, Spanish, Mandarin, arts, drama, music, design, coding, some more ad, uh, humanities if they want, some additional science if they like, uh, and we have a special course about German politics taught in German. Um, right now, students are getting prepared for the external examinations uh, in grade 10. They are organized, they are sort of IB exams as organized by the IB, externally uh, grade, marked and graded. In grade and, uh, 11 and 12, students study study six subjects and i saw in the that someone asked about what subjects we offer well we offer 52 subjects um and so a large number of, of subjects in each subject group students have to do um our students in grade 12 are right now preparing themselves for the exams they we had mock exams last week the last couple of weeks, and we uh, uh, are now setting them up for the final exams in May. And on Saturday, there are uh, is a big party coming up, uh, the prom. That's what they're looking forward to this week. Uh, as Tim mentioned before, uh, the IB gives the equivalent of the Abitur, the German Abitur. And um, uh, the uh, grade 10 exams give the, in a way, the uh, equivalent of the Mittlere Schulabschluss. Tim Thomas also talked about school after school activities. I would say that they are crucial for new students coming here. So we always encourage students to, to take part in, in whatever there is. That, that way they settle in much quicker. Okay, uh, Chris Floor, are you there? Chris Floor, are you there? Here I am. Chris Floor, who are you? <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris Floor. I'm one of the three guidance counselors that works in the senior school and provides uh, the support services that we provide for 
students in 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th grade. And can you please give us some kind of an overview of uh, the role you provide as guidance counselors? I, I'd be happy to, and um, I'll also just mention that I, I brought a son over here. I've been here 11 years. I brought my son here in 10th grade, and somebody's asking about German proficiency. He uh, learned German well enough at MIS to go on to study at German University, so that's been a fun journey for him. Our role, um, I, first of all, I feel really privileged that uh, this school provides um, guidance counselors here. There are three of us in the senior school. And because of that, and because we work with ninth through 12th grade, we can really get to know the students well. And I think that fits well with the holistic educational approach of the school, that we can holistically support the students. So we help them choose the academic courses that are most interesting to them and f find the right levels of academic challenge. We help them if there are any issues in the way they learn or how they study or what their goals are. And we support them um, emotionally, it's a, it's a complex time to navigate from 9th to 12th grade. They're growing a lot, so there are all kinds of issues going on other than academics. And we try to look at them as a whole picture and want them to be happy and well-balanced and uh, successful in many ways. So we have a, a diverse job and it's, it's different every day and it's really wonderful. Thank you. Um, so when there is a new student coming to MIS, to the senior school. What is the role of the uh, of you as a counselor in helping these students feel at home and to adapt quickly to at MIS? Well, whenever we can, we like to meet families prior to their child starting with our school, either in person or on a Teams or Skype interview, some kind of video interview. And that really starts the process of putting the student at ease because we recognize that Transitioning into a new school, uh, sometimes there's nervousness involved. And so the first thing is to just provide a friendly, welcoming face and a safe place to come. So the students know where our guidance offices are and they know that we're the go-to people that they can come to immediately with any questions at all. Because, yeah, it's a lot to come into this IB curriculum and get yourself uh, used to the vocabulary and the, the way of learning that we do here. So. We certainly on the first day when a student comes to our school, they spend the, half, the first half of the day really with us, taking some tours of the school, asking any questions they have, getting a locker, uh, learning how to use their, their identity cards and print things and all those little things and getting a computer. But what's really nice is that our students, I think, are so friendly and welcoming to new students that they quickly take over our job as far as uh, getting the new students acclimated to our school, the, the new student, I mean, the, the students that have been here a while, reach out to new students and take over other jobs. I really teach, they do the primary teaching of, hey, this is how you use your computer, this is how you get to class, this is where the lunch breaks are. So uh, we start the process and then our kids our kids take over. We do have an ambassador program, so we, we select a student and assign them to, each new student will have one student in their homeroom that's specifically assigned to look after them for the first few months too. So uh, in the chat, I said before that in the chat section, there was a question about uh, what subjects we offer. And I said we offer a lot of subjects, so that doesn't make it easier for the students. How do you as counselors help students going into grade 11 to select subjects? So again, what's really nice about our job and the fact that there's three of us is it gives us a lot of time to spend individually with each student. So we do large group presentations to give out general information. So for example, the entire 10th grade learns about the process of selecting courses um, for 11th and 12th grade. But then we sit down and spend quite a bit of time one-on-one -on -one with each student. And the families, of course, are welcome. And we take our time, we start this well in advance to consider the courses that are most interesting to the students, where they're likely to have the most success and to think about future planning and how the courses they select best position them for university applications and potential careers too because there are certain things if you want to study medicine in certain places then you really should be taking biology and chemistry in 11th and 12th grade so we just consider trying to keep as many doors open as possible is really the ultimate goal 
while, while setting the student up for success and, and really happiness. I mean, we hope that learning is a positive experience. And my final question, how do you support students in the process towards applying to universities? So similarly, uh, as to selecting the courses, we start early, um, very early in 11th grade at least, giving overviews of, and, and these students have this amazing opportunity for so many university systems. Yeah? Now in Europe, even if you want to study in English, there are many, many countries, France, the Netherlands, the UK, Germany included, offering some of these bachelor's degrees in English. So it's a wide variety of options for students. So we really need to start a little bit early, um, again, giving group presentations. Hey, this is what's going on in the Netherlands. This is what's going on with German universities, just to familiarize them. And then again, a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. What are your specific plans and dreams and goals and visions? And um, beginning early, because we, we think if we begin that university application process early, again, it can be fun. It doesn't have to be stressful. And many of our students apply to different university systems. So they may apply to the UK and the Netherlands and Germany and keep all those doors open and see what kind of offers they get back. So it's a fun, diverse process, and we really enjoy working with the students and their families. And most of our students, um, yeah, they get into great places and they come back and tell us about it. And we just had a, a day where a lot of alumni were back on campus sharing their experiences with the current students. <coughs> Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I will now give the floor to uh, admissions again. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Yes, also uh, from a personal experience, I can only confirm that it's just wonderful that we have such amazing guidance counselors as we have Chris, Ola and Linda in our senior school who help the students fantastically, be it regardless for course selection or social and emotional needs. We're just very lucky as a school. Um, we do have some questions. Uh, so perhaps Michelle, it's great that you are there in view, because <laughs> uh, the first one would be for you, um, or could be for you. Um, the question is, can a child switch from a regular school to yours? So am I asking? Well, I'm wondering what they mean by regular school, um, but I, what I can Could say... Could be, let's say, from all different, yeah, non, yes. maybe non-English speaking, regardless if it's German or outside. Right. Yeah. I uh, we have students come from all different systems. So if they're coming from the British system, a national system from their home country, we manage that uh, transition without a problem. Um, one of the things that we need to do again is assess English ability, but also get them acquainted with the middle years program. So if they're not coming in grade five, we do offer specialized training for new students in the MYP so they understand how they're assessed. Um, in the MYP, students are assessed to apply their knowledge. So while, yes, they are tested on um, their ability to know and understand things, they are asked to communicate about them and to apply them to real world situations. So for many of our students, this is new. It might be different. So we are used to managing um, entrances from all different kinds of school systems. Yeah, basically a, a question that follows to it is uh, we had one uh, question that in the chat regarding the, con the seamlessly continuation in a German school. If after a few years at MAS, the family would decide to go to the gymnasium or any other school in the German system. So we haven't had a lot of experiences with that because the students are able to come here and do learn English quickly and they, um, they are able to keep up their level of proficiency in German and often decide to stay. Um, I think there may be limited cases of students going to a German school um, and have done so, have been able to do so. Um, the next question I have is more for Anders. And um, the question is, how easy is it when a student graduates from MIS to study at a German university? And if you're muted, sorry. That is a good question. 
uh, many of our students choose to go to German universities. When they come back, I ask them that question. So how, what about your level of German? Is that good? Good enough. Um, and they haven't said that that is a problem. We even had, uh, last year we had a Japanese student who, uh, very strong student acad academically, uh, but his German wasn't that strong. But he learned a lot of German towards, did extra courses and so forth. And he's now studying at uh, LMU. Um, so even a non-native speaker from from uh, the other side of, of the globe can can do it. So I haven't heard from our German speaking students that they had any problems in terms of language and not they are very well prepared academically, that's for sure. Oh, that's great. Um, another question is, and it's probably more for uh, David, uh, is how different learning styles are accommodated in the classroom? Oh, that's a great question. Um, as I said uh, in my presentation, if, I'm sorry if you missed it, uh, we do have a variety of learners in, in the classrooms, and that's uh, true across uh, all grades at MIS just with the international nature of the school and children coming from all around the world, different linguistic and uh, family backgrounds, we are prepared to help children in any number of ways. Uh, if you look at our uh, how the classrooms are arranged, particularly in the junior school, um, there's more mobility. Children have access to different parts of the classroom. They, we have furniture, it's modular furniture that can be moved. Children can work individually, they can work in groups. Uh, we also have a lot of soft seating. Children can also work on the floor. They can work in bean bags, uh, cushions. We do want to provide students a range of options uh, with how they do, how they complete their work, who they work with, and the activity level that takes place in the classroom. Uh, we have uh, an occupational therapist who consults with us uh, to help us under, better understand the needs of children's growing bodies, uh, how to support their handwriting, how to support their development. Uh, physically so that they can be more successful in the classroom. So uh, we we do look at every child individually and we try to make sure that we provide the, the most suitable environment so that they can um, reach their potential. I'll leave it at that. Great. The last question, um, maybe you are also the right person to ask, is uh, the school that this parent had been going to had a strong parent-teacher organization. Is there something similar at MIS? Um, absolutely. Uh, I think all of the principals would agree, and, and Tim Thomas as well. Having worked in a number of schools, the Parent Teacher of Orion, or, which is the equivalent of a Parent Teacher Association, is um, hugely supportive of our school and a dynamic group of parents who work in tandem with us and in, in partnership to support and develop our community. Uh, not only are they there to provide events at our school and special events, uh, whether it's Halloween, Fruling's Fest, uh, Winter Fest, any number of events that bring families together. There's also a lot that the PTV does outside of our school off campus to unite parents uh, through the support of providing uh, groups who meet, maybe coffee groups for uh, neighborhoods. So the parents in various neighborhoods of the Munich area, whether it's Grunwald, Starnberg, Munich itself, can get together and share ideas and resources. They organize, uh, help organizing with hiking groups. There's also um, nationality groups, so families of various nationalities, whether it's Korean or Italian, any number of groups can get together as well socially. Uh, the PTV has been a huge supporter as well as fundraiser for our school, and I, I truly don't think we could uh, have such a fabulous program without the PTV's involvement. There was one question I saw earlier in the chat that had to do with outdoor making. I'm not sure if that was addressed completely. Um, Armin Martin, if you are there, perhaps you might want to log back in and just talk about the um, how the school supports and facilitates outdoor learning and outdoor um, making for that matter. Sure, um, we have a wonderful space outside. And so um, to give you an example, we um, have a music teacher that is leading a lot of music lessons outside and the students really enjoy that. But with regards to making, we have an outdoor nature maker space that's open during recess time. And so the students can just do open-ended creative builds out there. 
And it's really great seeing students of all different sizes and all different ages working together to create something together. Um, we also have a garden, and so we're very active there. Um, some of the after school care students are working in the garden now, but also in our grade one, the grade one students do most of the clearing of the garden, most of the planting. And then, for example, when they plant in the spring in grade one, then in grade two, they come and they harvest it in the fall. Um, and then there's just lots of other opportunities, for example, in the forest. So um, we'll go into the forest for various lessons um, and we'll teach certain things depending on the interests and, you know, those content standards as well. So we don't need to just do mathematics in the room, in the classroom, or for example, uh, literacy can be done quite well and enhanced in our outdoor environment. That's right. Thank you, Armin. Back to you, Suzanne. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. If there's any other questions that you feel that we have not attended completely, or if you have other individual or personal questions, then please reach out to the admissions office. We all have or have had uh, children at NMIS, so we would be delighted to, to help you and our experience in so many ways. Um, then if you also would like to come and visit us or uh, talk to us in person over Teams, we would be delighted to arrange a meeting for you. If it's if for now or maybe for in the future, we would always be uh, happy to speak to you. We thank you very much for joining us uh, today and we hope you enjoyed the, the session. We wish you all the best and uh, hope to be in touch with you soon. Thank you, bye-bye.